Bloodstained Curse of the Moon was developed by NT Creates and was released on PC, PS4, PlayStation Vita, Xbox One, 3DS, and Nintendo Switch on May 24, 2018. It is a retro style platformer based on the playstyle of the old school Castlevania games. So since that is probably my favorite series of all time, I knew I had to check this title out and see if it was up to snuff with the classic Castlevania games. Curse of the Moon starts with following demon hunter Zengetsu on his solo quest and ridding the world of all demon kind. He controls just like Simon or Trevor Belmont in the first three Castlevania NES games, but he uses a katana instead of a whip and his attack range is shorter. He has a choice to be joined by up to three other characters after the first three boss fights. They each have their own playstyle, strengths, and weaknesses. Miriam is much like Zangetsu in her style, but she has a higher jump, a slide, and uses a long-range whip for attacks. Alfred is an alchemist, and his strength lies primarily in magic attacks. Otherwise, he is slow, controls a little stiff, and has a very weak staff melee attack. Jabel is an almost vampiric character that is much like Alucard from Castlevania III Dracula's Curse. He uses three bats as his attack that does a wonderful job of hitting enemies high above him, and he can turn into a bat to reach areas that the other characters cannot. Which brings me to another neat aspect of the game. It has plenty of branching sections to be explored in multiple playthroughs, and lots of hidden upgrades for making the character stronger. It's good to explore and see what you can find, but it's not something that you have to do your first time through. I did a little bit, but still made it through the veteran difficulty without losing all of my lives and only having 5 upgrades found. Another interesting mechanic that you can totally change the game with is the fact that instead of bringing the allies along, you can kill them when you meet them and it grants you a power for each one. For killing Miriam you gain a jump attack that has a great arc to it and helps you hit things that normally would be out of reach. For killing Alfred you gain a double jump that makes reaching areas and getting through tough spots much easier and for killing Jabel, you get a dash. This is easily the least useful of the three. Even though killing them made me feel really shitty, having this as an option to choose opens up a few different ways to play, and I didn't even notice you could do this my first time through the game. If you do use the ally characters, however, you can quickly switch back and forth between any of them with the press of a button. It works seamlessly, and some of the player characters are better for getting through certain areas than others. And when a character dies though, they are out for the rest of the life that is in use, and only the remaining characters can be used. And if all of them die, then a life is lost and they all return. If you are just going it alone with Zengetsu, you will just lose a life after every death like you normally would. Another interesting thing is that every character has their own independent sub-weapons and stamina. So if one character is about to die, they can always be switched out so they aren't lost. And in veteran difficulty, there were limited lives, but also unlimited continues, so Curse of the Moon isn't too punishing. The graphics remind me of those old classic Castlevanias, and I would say it's a mix between Castlevania III Dracula's Curse and Rondo of Blood with being kind of an 8-bit, 16-bit hybrid. The stages are fun, colorful, and very well animated, each one offering up a different theme that really took me back to my childhood wondering where the game would take me next. I really like the designs of the enemies and the bosses. The bosses were big and for the most part fun to fight. I really only disliked one of the bosses, but that's just because I never really figured out the best strategy for fighting it. It seemed like no matter what I did I was always taking damage, but I also knew that it wasn't the game's fault that this was happening. Enemies are also done with a great variety and everything down to the Medusa head like enemies make an appearance. This really feels like a long lost game from many years ago that we just missed out on. The sounds and music are fantastic. The themes made me feel right at home and the more I played the more I realized how good the songs really were. They were very catchy and I found myself humming them in no time, which is always a good sign. I can tell a lot of care was put into both the sound and the music. After the game is finished you can see that there are multiple innings to be obtained and there are new modes that can be unlocked, so there's plenty of replay value to be had with this one. And I know I'll be sinking quite a few hours into this for sure just to find every secret that it has to offer. So would I recommend Bloodstained Curse of the Moon? Hell yes I would, especially if you already liked or loved the old Castlevania games. Konami may have given up on one of the best things it had going for it, but I'm so happy to see that fans and the developers didn't, and brought forth a new and exciting game for fans to play. I highly recommend supporting this title, and showing NT Creates that their great work deserves praise, and I really hope they bring out some more games in the same style in the future.